Paradis, and I'm a former art teacher, and also uh, for most of my professional life I've been a freelance illustrator and a maker of children's books. I was working, well I was, I was asked to come by Heather Langlois, and she assembled the art and music teachers. We wanted to do a presentation on illustration, how I get my ideas, um, how I work, how I sketch, which is very professional. I showed them my paper bags, my napkins, my torn out notebook sheets, <laughs> and you know, various and sundry other professional tools of the trade. Well, as I told them, all of my books are born in the heart of darkness, and I, I usually try to take painful episodes and work them around until they become loving representations. For example, the daddy book that I talked to them about was um, undertaken as a response to two things. First of all, um, my son was getting a divorce and was heartbroken at the possibility of being away from his son. And also, I grew up without a father, so I always wondered, well, what do they do? What are they for? And so the, those two things combined, and I, I started watching my son with, with my grandson. And my grandson gave me the opening line for the book. He, I was holding him on the 19th floor of their apartment building on the balcony, and we were looking down, waiting for my son to come out on the ground. And my grandson looked at me and he said, Nana, when he saw his father, he said, Nana, my daddy can't cross the street alone. And I thought, oh my God, what does that mean to it? To, I think it was like two and a half. And I thought, what does he think is out there across the street? So the street in the book morphs into a jungle. You know, you can see cars and traffic and signs and neon lights. And then there's the odd monkey hanging from the street light. And as you move farther down, the buildings morph into trees and there are tigers and lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> That's um, from the daddy book. And in that book, there are animals throughout. I told you in the beginning of the book, it's the first line is, my daddy can cross the street alone. And that's when you begin to see a very subtle appearance of, of animals who become more uh, prominent as the book goes on. The, the line that goes with that particular painting says, um, his voice can fill the night. The second to last page, I think, says he always finds his way home, his way back home. And when he comes, he hugs me and spins my world around. And then my daddy throws me high. I fly. And you see, when he comes home, that all the animals are still there, but they're all his stuffed animals. The mommy book, which is over there. The mommy is doing all those homey things that mothers do at home, washing the girl, feeding her, getting dressed, you know, all this stuff. Very home-based female things. And when I was doing the book, I did it as a to honor my mother and my daughter. And when I was a kid, um, uh, my mother was the only one who worked. The only one. And I just wanted her to be home and do those things. So that's how I made her. How would you describe your illustrations? Well, they're pretty... Um, I would call them maybe realistic fantasy. They're um, pretty detailed. I, I like to work in gouache, and that's a, a kind of a tight medium. It's, it's a high-end temper paint. And um, I don't know, the, the fantasy end of it just kind of shows up. And the animals show up. And as I'm painting, I just keep I add things as they come to me. It, t it takes however long it takes. You know, I just, I start them, then I, I go to the gym, I go for a walk, I come back, I work on, you know, this, it's, I'm not, now that I'm retired, I'm not on a time limit. And it takes me forever to figure out a concept, you know, to decide how I, how I want it to be. And then once I get that sink the basket feeling, a three pointer from the corner, you know, then I think, okay, that's it. That's a little better than how I begin. How I really begin is, as I told you, paper bags. <laughs> um, but these are 
some of the sketches that I did for Snow Princess in the beginning. And then what I do is take them from that storyboard and cut them out and arrange them. I like working on black paper because it always feels like I'm turning on the lights. I authored four of the books that are up there. I authored uh, My Mommy and My Daddy. Those are companion pieces. Uh, Snow Princess and Edna. And Edna is my most recent one. And that's a, a little departure because um, Edna was done for children who have been traumatized. I tried doing the, the idea with real kids. It didn't work. <laughs> it was much too um, arresting. And I used an elephant because it allows the young children to transfer whatever is bothering them onto the elephant who has worries and secrets that she tries to hide. And she gets so tangled up in them that she's trapped in this box where she's hidden them until Ms. Maxwell, the friendly therapist mouse, comes along with all of her tools, her flute and her cello and her box of, of helpful things to give Edna the help that she needs to unravel her worries. I have uh, two therapists who have been using it, and one woman um, has had very great success with it in her practice. With the young people, she uses puppets. She uses an elephant and a mouse puppet, and the kids really respond to that, and then they act out their own difficulties with the puppets. The story is about a little girl in a snowstorm who knows her daddy will be home at some point, and she's going to build a castle for him. And so, as she's preparing the castle, she, she plans to invite the lords and ladies, which are the snow mogul animals. I was up at Sunday River, and I was standing at the bottom of the mountain. It was late in the afternoon, and I was looking at the moguls. And it was kind of like, you know, when you look at clouds when you're a kid, and you think, oh, wow, that looks like a cow, or that looks like whatever. Well, I started seeing animal shapes in the moguls, in the shadows, and there was a line of um, pine trees al along the side that cast pointed shadows. So I took a lot of pictures and thought a lot of thoughts, and then one day my daughter-in-law called me during a big snowstorm, and my son was late getting home. And she said, oh, I can't wait for him to get home. You should see the snow dragon they made. And they were really little, so the snow dragon was pretty funny. So the moguls on Sunday River became the animals. The um, pine trees became the plates, the dragon, the plates, the spikes on his back. And then the animals got dressed up. And I was presenting to a kindergarten class one, one time, and one of the kids said, whoa, those guys really got dressed up. What is an illustrator versus any other type of, of artist? An illustrator is someone who tells a story with their, with their work. You know, you are either responding to a text or simply telling a story. There are a few really good um, wordless picture books out there for children. Not that some painters don't tell stories with their work as well, but um, it's sort of a different approach. If yeah. there were a student, they want to pursue art somehow, as an illustrator mm -hmm. or as any other branch of art, what advice would you give them? Oh, I would say go for it. Absolutely. I have, well, I, I'm not teaching now. I've been retired for 11 years, but I have so many former students who are illustrators, designers, architects, filmmakers, advertisers, you know, um, and parents would come in every single, the first PTA meeting of every single year, and they'd say, well, um, what, what, what they really do with an art degree? <laughs> and I thought, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> there are probably more jobs in the field of art than any other, I mean, in the broader field of art than anything else. There are so many little subdivisions and things. I think if you're an artist, you just have to be one. There's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm.